So welcome everyone. My name is Chandler. If it's your first time here and you've never met me, just wait. It'll happen. So tonight when you guys came in on your seat, you guys, those random connection cards, make sure you fill those out later on. You can see the offering buckets come around. Don't forget to put those in there. So this series we're going to talk about is for tonight is I'm grateful, which for me, the struggle is real. <laughs> Complaining comes second nature. I found a candy bar that says complainer on it, right? So it's kind of just forcing me just to say, you know what, it's okay to complain. Of course, I'm gonna have a story for you. So, I don't like to, in fact, I don't like to fly. I hate flying. But yet my work requires I do it almost once a month. So I tend to get a little bougie with which seat that I pick. And I kind of like the aisle seat. But it's like the less of the three evils. All right? Because there's a hierarchy of seats. I'm going to break it down for you. All right? So you have the window seat. And if you're bigger than five foot one and weigh more than 90 pounds, you're kind of scrunched in there. Then you have the middle seat, which is if you're average size, you're going to be squished. Because you don't sit next to two small people. You're always going to sit sandwiched between two large people. And the types of people that I get to sit next to are mouth breathers, and people that are either lactose intolerant or have an aversion to gluten. What does that mean? They feel the need to crop dust me the entire flight. So I'm surrounded by hot air. I've got this mouth breather over here, and this guy pretends like there's nothing going on, but it burns so bad right here. Right there. And then you have the aisle seat. Well, for me, that's where my shoulder kind of spills out into the aisle, which is kind of a good thing. Because every time that little, you get your little micro packet of peanuts or pretzels, the cart hits me in the elbow to wake me up. Because the ladies, you're up, you got the air engines going, right? The airplane engines. And they're like, would you like something to drink? You're sleeping. And then I'm watching a movie. I'm not asleep. And I miss out every time. And then I get cranky, and I complain about the flight. The minute I get home, all I do is complain about the flight and the people I'm surrounded with. But on the flip side of that, I hate people who complain. <laughs> so it's like, well, I'm my own worst enemy. It, people complain about everything. The weather. Whether the weather is 90 degrees or it's 70, someone's always going to say something about it. Like, oh, it's too cold. Yesterday was perfect. Well, why can't today be perfect? You know, well, no, two days ago it was perfect. So the temperature where you're at is never perfect. And then, so I'm going to put a disclaimer out there. I'm not talking about up here tonight. <laughs> Some of it might hit home. And if it does, bless your heart, because you might fall in that complainer category. But school. Everybody complains about school. I hate going to school. And it's funny, I hear more complaints on a Sunday than I do on a Friday. Because Friday is the last day of school. Everyone's like, yeah. But then Sunday, I hear, oh, school sucks. I can't, oh, what, I got to go tomorrow. I have this test to do. I have homework. But wait, you had Friday and Saturday. <laughs> what happened to those two days? Oh, that doesn't count. I had to go to a party, and I had a game, and I had band, and I'm like, but prioritize. That sounds more like a time management problem than it does a school problem. But I don't judge. Fast food. It's not fast enough. So growing up, if you wanted a hamburger, you didn't just go to McDonald's. Your mom took out five pounds of ground beef, put eggs, cilantro, onions, everything that doesn't look like a typical cheeseburger. Mom's like, I can make it better. And it took her probably about an hour and a half to make it. But here we go. 
you either go to McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's, Jesus Chicken, whatever you get, and she's like, your order will be there with you in three minutes. And you're like, oh, three minutes. I have to wait for some delicious glutinous chicken with some gluten-free fries. It's going to take three minutes. And you complain about it. <laughs> the best one is there's no food to eat inside this house. Mom comes home from the grocery store. You open up the pantry. Ah, there's nothing. Go to the refrigerator. Ah, there's nothing. And then you sit there and, and, and complain about it. No, no. What's in there is food, but it's not where you can just punch buttons in a microwave and it goes. I mean, you could literally go to like a fast food place and just point, ah, and they'll get it. <laughs> or you want your mom to get you some bagel bites or some Totina's pizza rolls, and you're like, yeah, now there's food in the house. Yeah, no. Nothing on TV. Right? I mean, everything I'm reading, you guys are like, oh, yeah, yeah. So where's my back row? The back row. If the president was talking on all four channels, Flipper was done. There is no Flipper, right? You forget Magnum PI, too. It's not happening. For you front row guys, you don't have to worry about the president hogging your channels because he's going to be on C-SPAN or CNN. But you still have 300 channels on DirecTV. Even if you don't even, if you have Netflix or Amazon or just rabbit ears on a TV, you're still going to get more channels. Nothing on TV. Okay. Clothes. Oh, I got nothing to wear. Some of you have what's called a clothes closet, right? A room in the house dedicated to nothing but clothes. Oh, I have nothing. Still boggles my mind. Some of you guys have a walk in closet. Like you can get, you, Narnia is in there. And one thing is you guys have a protected environment. And sometimes we take that for granted, right? You come here, four walls, roof. Some of you guys have been in here when there's been a hailstorm, thunder, and you guys really aren't worried about it. And that's interesting that here we are, we just listened to an awesome band sing about God and what he's done for us and, and how awesome he is, but nobody's worried about some random group of rebels coming through here and saying, if anybody believes in Jesus, raise your hand because I'm going to kill you. Like, we don't even think about that, especially on a Sunday. We're just like, oh, it's Jesus Day, right? And I can get up here with a microphone and say Jesus and not worry about anything. So why are we ungrateful by nature? It's like we come into the world and it's just, we have this sense of entitlement. We want everything better. We want more of it, and we want it stronger. And that goes with, with anything you apply to. You got a microwave. What's well, this big? Well, I want one this big. Okay. Well, I have a car. Ah, you have a Prius. You need a Mustang. Why? <laughs> you have a car. Some of you guys get cars, and you're like, uh, it's a car. What? I mean, some of you guys aren't going to get a car. You're going to get that new model, Chevrolet legs. All right, shovel legs. Bless your heart, okay? So, to be grateful, that's hard. That's why I say it, it, the struggle is real. I struggle with it. What are the key factors of being grateful? Well, you have generous, encouraging, thankful. Just those three right there. Some of you guys are sitting there right now, and can, if you were to imagine, which friend do I have has those qualities? You'll have to go through the, the files a little bit. That person. But if you didn't include yourself with that, maybe you're part of the problem. It's easy to get what you want in this world if you're actually generous. It doesn't make sense. But it is. People who are generous are usually grateful. For example, if I have money and we go to a, you know, we go to Shell, and let's say I go, 
with Cool Hand over here. And he's like, he gets up there and he's like, oh, I've only got two dollars, but it costs five. I can sit there and sit in the back and go, oh, you know, sorry for you, man. <laughs> Guess you're putting something back. Or I could just give him the two or three dollars. And it makes me feel good to know that I gave him something he didn't have. Why? Because if you think about it, we've all been in that position where we didn't have something and someone's given it to us. It could be a stick of gum. Now, how powerful is a stick of gum? Anybody think a stick of gum is powerful? Raise your hand if you think it's powerful. Okay, for those of you who don't think it's powerful, I just chugged a full throttle. So I've got like caffeine breath. Why don't you come be a close talker with me and then we'll see how important gum is. I'm not gonna lie, it's kinda hot up here right now, but, but those three factors, you will know people in this life that never get to that level. To me, that's crazy. My, people that have been around me for a while, there's two things that I get stressed over. Or I, if it doesn't affect these two things, if it doesn't affect your, your, your money or your family, it's not worth it, not worth stressing over. Anything. If somebody had a car and they just smashed their windshield outside, who would be mad? Who would be mad if you walked outside in your car? It's a windshield. That's what you have insurance for. I'm like, whatever, it'll get fixed. I'm not worried about it. There's an old school guy I know. His name is Luke. And he dropped some knowledge in the Bible. Roughly about the... No, not that Luke. Don't, no, that's... No. But Luke. It's in this big book called the Bible. Roughly about chapter 17. I'm going to guess verse 11. He says, now on this way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As going to a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. We'll talk about leprosy in a minute. They stood at a distance, 13, and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. Go ahead. There we go. So when Jesus saw them, he said, go show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he had saw he was healed, came back, praising God. In a loud voice, he threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. So Jesus said, we're not, there, we're not all ten cleansed. Where's the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? So, leprosy, let's break that down. Everyone's had some kind of physical activity, whether it be ultimate, sports, the gym. And at a certain point of being funky, you don't smell your own funk. Right? I've been in the field with a bunch of army guys, and we haven't showered in a week. After day two, we think we smell great. And then I come home, and Kathy gags the whole way home because I smell so bad. So now, even when I come home from the gym, I'm like, hey, I just got home from the gym. I'm, I might not be sweaty, but I have to give that warning to Kathy and the boys, Kathy's my wife, that, hey, I'm funky, don't hug me. So leprosy is 10 times worse than that, maybe 100 times. Leprosy is a disease where basically your flesh starts rotting away from the outside in. So you start with some sores, maybe some boils, and then when I say it rots away, like it'll go down to the muscle, down to the bone. And it's contagious. So you have to walk everywhere you go and yell unclean. Like, hey, I have something nasty, stay away from me. So your fingertips, you could just do that and your finger might fall off. I imagine it's pretty painful. Some of them at nighttime, they would sleep. And if you've ever smelled rotting flesh, you know it's going to attract gnats, mosquitoes, flies, rats. Rats might come up and start gnawing at your feet and just gnaw off a toe. That's nasty. So 
I know I wouldn't go up and say, hey, what's up? You want a hug? No, I'm not doing that. So imagine going years without a hug, a high five, a handshake. What if you were married? What if you had kids? You would never hug your kid. We were designed for human contact. A hug goes a long way. When you're a kid and your mom hugs you, you're like, oh, everything's better. Even as a grown man, sometimes you're just like, I just need a hug. Give me a hug. You know, and you get a hug. So Jesus healed all of them. One guy came back and said, I'm grateful. I'm thankful. Thank you. Jewish, Samarian, Samaritan. I know you guys don't get the feud of that. It'd be kind of like, we're going to say American and maybe a Muslim extremist. Ooh, now we're getting a touchy subject there. Right? So, I mean, you could tell they're not going to get along. But he came back and said, thank you. Point. I know every good thing comes from God. James 1, 17. So what does that mean? So basically, every good and perfect thing comes from above. I've heard this, this verse a lot of times, and I'm not really sure what it meant. Then Kathy broke it down for me, and then she broke it down for the boys. The, my boys are 6 and 10. They'd have bad dreams. And they're like, oh, I don't know. Why did God give me a bad dream? Kathy would go, well, you know what? If it's not good and perfect, then it's not from God. So let's, 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 let's apply that to other terms. God hates me. Why is God picking on me? We call it the Job complex. Why is God giving me all this bad luck? Maybe he's not the one doing it. You know, there's a war going on, right? I mean, heaven and hell, age old, couple thousand years, 100,000, right? Maybe it's that guy, it's Satan. Maybe he's doing it. We're quick to blame him and not thank him and forget about that. God's word directs us. He gives us health, friends, and life. So the Bible is kind of this big outline. That if you have any questions, it's going to answer it for you. How to live a better life. How to find meaningful friends. And get your life straight. It changes our attitude from entitlement to gratitude. That's a big one. Point number two. I will not let what I want rob me of what I have. So we've already hit some of that a little bit with having a better car, house, travel, clothes, money. So it's better to embrace what God gives you than want more. So what has God given us? How many people have a pair of shoes here? We're going to keep our hands up. How many people got indoor shoes and outdoor shoes? about yard working shoes? How many people got gym shoes, right? How many people got pumps? St strappy shoes, right? Um, heels, sandals, yeah. Because it's, it's summertime as far as I'm concerned, so I'm wearing sandals. <laughs> so we've just named, like, that's, some of you guys might have 10 pairs of shoes. 10 pairs, maybe more. That might be your thing. So you might have a couple hundred dollars in just shoes, but you're still not satisfied. You're like, mom, I need more shoes. Dad, these shoes are old. Dad, the Wi-Fi, not cutting it. All right? Dad, I need 4G. So, so, why? Dad, I need, the, I need the new Galaxy S7. What's wrong with the 6? Well, the 7 is like, 2.3 seconds, and the S6 is 3 seconds. So let me get this straight. When I press a button to send a signal to a satellite in space that goes to a server, which then touches another phone, in 3 seconds, also I can drop a poop emoji to another person. That's not good enough? And then that person to send it back 
to say thumbs up. That's what I'm going to pick my fights over. <laughs> That's what I'm not grateful for. Thousands of miles to send a winky face. And I'm like, this is not good enough. To me, that's, that's an American thing. In other countries, they don't really have a sense of entitlement. And I'm not talking about, oh, third world, Uganda, Namobibia countries. I mean, this, is, this could be Middle East, for, for example. When you steal something here, you could be in the wrong and still get found not guilty. <laughs> that blows my mind. There's a kid who stole in the Middle East, probably about six years old, probably about my youngest son's age, Iden's. What they did is they wrapped his arm up in a towel, put him in the street, took a car and rolled over that kid's arm. Front and then back. And you know what? It's common practice. So the kid's arm is now completely crushed and he's probably gonna be deformed because he stole a piece of fruit. 50 cents here. But yet, I just saw a YouTube clip the other day from the news where somebody stole something from somebody and they said, well, I'm entitled to that because I'm poor. How am I gonna survive? I, I'm supposed to steal from everybody. Really? Philippians 4 is broke down. For I've learned to be content whatever the circumstance, and I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in I want. I can do all this through Christ who gives me strength. And we've all heard that verse. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, but the precursor to it, when Paul says, I have learned to be content whatever the circumstance, Paul's been on both sides. Paul's been a baller, and Paul's been in prison. So he knows what it's like to be both sides. Some of you guys sitting here going, oh, I'm broke. Our family is so broke. We're only, we only got one router in our house. My iPad is the old version. I don't think that's in need. So we've talked about the sense of entitlement and our way of thinking. So how do we, what do we, where do we start with thanking God at? Well, there's the big three that are pretty easy. You can thank God for your job, friends, and your house. I mean, those are huge right there. I don't think anybody leaves here to go live under a bridge or stand on the side of the road and say, we'll dance for food. You can turn every blessing into a praise. Third point. Turn every blessing into a praise. So how do you, how do you start this? So how am I going to turn every blessing into a praise? What are my blessings? So I start something very simple. And I start it with my kids. Most people, when you pray at night, you say, Dear God, help my friends, help my parents, help this how I've taught them to do it, it's real easy. Say, dear God, thank you for, and they go to the list. And the list, can, it, it's whatever, right? I think a prayer two nights ago was, dear God, thank you that I, uh, uh, what is it, I beat that guy on Halo. Uh, dear God, thank you, I got Assassin's Creed, Black Flag, and even though it was already free or downloaded, but I didn't still thank God for it. And I'm like, cool, right on. Hey, God, thank you that I didn't get yelled at today by my dad. God, thank you that my room is picked up. Thank you that mom cooked dinner. Thank you that mom cooked lasagna and not, uh, you know, there's a adamame beans or something. I don't know. You know, I was like, thank you that mom made lasagna. And then, thank you that mom made lasagna and helped me have a good week and help my dad have a good week at school, at work, help my mom, help our house. That's how it goes. So when you start thanking God for what you have, it's pretty soon you start asking for less. 
I should not have this blank. But God, thank you that I have this. So do we deserve anything that we have? Remember that guideline I talked about, about the Bible? All have sinned, come short, short of what? Right? Well, there's the glory of God, but it's God's standard. Well, what's God's standard? Well, every week we kind of talk about what he expects out of us and how we can do that. Ways to show thankfulness. There's some things that we're going to talk over. You can talk it over either your small group, your, your family, friends. Show, show them how some things they can do. Make it a daily habit. Well, there's a Bible plan. Right? And when I say Bible plan, people think, oh, it's this huge long devotion with a bunch of words I don't mean. I do it. I mean, it's on this app, and you pick it up, and you click it, and it just says like one little verse, and it's like, oh, cool. But if you think about that, how that verse applies to the day, huh, okay, that's one way. Share a job, relationship, possession, you really want. Sharing is hard. <laughs> when you're a little kid, you don't want to do it. So why would I want to do it as an adult? Write at least two thank you notes this week. Someone beside you, someone beside your best friend, Someone who you think might need to hear that. So tonight, your next steps. So some options. You know, I always give you hierarchies and options. So next steps. I will be more grateful for things I have gotten but not earned. I will ask Jesus to help me with my spirit of entitlement. And I want Jesus to lead my life. I just don't know where to start. Right? You got to start somewhere. But that spirit of entitlement, that's not, that's not an easy thing to break. My oldest son deals with that every day. I deal with it. I'm like, you know what? I deserve that house. I deserve that promotion. And for some reason, God keeps telling me, no, no, you don't. Not yet. You're not grateful enough. I've been waiting four years for this promotion. <laughs> so when you think God's going to answer you in a week or a day, sometimes, remember, his time is not our time. So his time apparently is like more than four years. <laughs> but do I get mad about it? So instead of being mad that, no, God, I don't have that promotion. No, hey, God, thank you that I did get the last one. Bring it in. Bring it in for, bring it in. Come on. Bring it in. We're going to get ready for, as, as, when the band comes out. They're going to close this out with a song. And sometimes when we come up here, we come up and re reflect on our lives. And no, I just want this, this week, I want you guys to focus on what you're going to be thankful for. And then how do you show that you're thankful? Start at home. That's the easiest one. Start with your parents. They deserve it more than anybody. They got to put up with you guys? Oh, bless their heart. <laughs> so let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that we're, all, we're able to come here today and freely just praise your name. You've given us more than we could ever want or imagine. You've done so many things in our lives. Each and every one of us here doesn't deserve it, but we're so thankful that you give us your love, attention, and you are our true provider. This week, help us keep it focused and grounded and shake the spirit of entitlement. God, I want you to, sh to, to bring to light one thing that they didn't realize that they had that they're thankful for. Just one. And just watch over these, these kids this week, especially when, you know, Devil's going to come and give them all kind of drama. Help them, help them keep focused and grounded. In Jesus' name, amen.